they switch <laughs> spots on the on the picks and bans. They don't want Peke playing it, obviously. Um, but Newtok always has potential to play it, so just gonna take it away. They're gonna have that first pick, but what do they want to get for it? Well, Shen gonna be taken out here by Lemon Dogs as well. Obviously, not want to let that in the hands of Soaz. And you actually see that you can see on the right that Peke and Cyanide have joined the game in the wrong order. It's a very simple thing. That's to what do. threw me off. Or, I swear. or. <laughs> Are they going to do another roll switch? I doubt that's going to happen, but it'd you know, be amazing. We've seen it before from Fnatic, the only team that have really uh, done that one here. So we'll see. Elise banned out there. We talked about Elise before. Dexter in the jungle strong. So as in the top lane strong. No Elise this game. Yeah, and I'm like we were saying before, Elise can be taken away, but the cannon. I'm still looking to maybe see that band, or maybe that will be the first pick for Lemon Dogs. But one thing they need to make sure to do is have Nuto get a chance if he's comfortable on. That isn't really easy to counter. Maybe like an R or something like that because he's had such a tough time against Fnatic when he has to pick before them, when he gets counterpicked. Well, uh, they, so they just missed a ban, right? I'm not sure if they missed it or if that was intentional. It's one of the two. It is. It, that is definitely one not, of the options. <laughs> it's not there. So they didn't go for a third ban, whatever they... The reasoning behind that may be whether a tactical choice or really what's going on from that one. We'll see a little bit later on uh, when we hear from him. But Kennen is going to be the final ban out here from Fnatic. They'll use all three. Uh, so no Kennen for Zoro Zero in this. Yep. And that's going to be a... Oh, they didn't want to ban. I was asking, okay. asking Nuke they didn't want to ban. So they, they left that one free because they don't want to take away too many diff or too many champions. But with that Kennen being taken away, Zoro Zero is a little bit sad. He's not going to be able to play that in that top lane, but there's still so many champions to pick right now. Fiddlesticks for Mythi, Thresh for Mythi. I mean, it's easy to pick a support as your first uh, thing mm -hmm. since you can kind of counter what Fnatic's going to throw at you, and looks like that might be the pick. Yeah, that's what they're going to go with. Pick up that Thresh, three wins, um, uh, two wins out of three, sorry, for Mythi on that Thresh. So certainly he is a very, very strong Thresh player. Really, as I said before, has come in and become a, a very analytical mm -hmm. figure in this Lemon Dogs team that's helped them out. And you know, the pick band phase is one of the biggest uh, areas of that, of course, as well. On the other side, looks like we could be seeing, and we will be seeing, Fiddlesticks locked in here for Yellow Star. Push, you're going to have Caitlyn. Okay, so it'll be really interesting to see how well he does on, on Fiddlesticks in that bottom lane. It's not really a deadly lane with that Caitlyn Fiddlesticks, but that also leads me to believe there's potential for XPK to play Caitlyn middle. We saw that versus SK versus Fnatic when also was playing Anivia. So that is always a champion that they can kind of roam around or, or choose where exactly they want that uh, want that to go. But in my head, I'm still thinking Lemon Dogs are the first team to purposely let a ban go through. And it's not against the rules, and it's actually very smart. I was, just, I was just thinking about that, like the possibilities and how no team's really doing that. Yeah, you're, you're allowed to do it. You don't have to ban anyone if you don't want to. But I think a couple of bans certainly are uh, definitely needed. Uh, we did see Jarvan the fourth and Zach being picked up here by Lemon Dog. So Dex are going to have the Jarvan in the jungle again. Very, very strong. You mentioned that one before. And that's Zach for the top lane most probably here for Zoro Zero. Yep, so right now Lemon Dogs, they're getting comfort champions. Yeah. And we see how deadly that can be. We saw it actually yesterday with TSM getting, uh, I believe it was Nocturne, Karthus together uh, to, to really, I forget the team they were playing against. I think it was the Lossy at the time. But with that Jarvan, he's yeah. feel comfortable in the jungle. With the Zach in the top lane on Zoro Zero, it's gonna be really interesting to see how well that works. Hmm. Go ahead. Go ahead. You got Karma. This. So Karma <laughs> gonna be picked up here then for Fnatic, which I'm gonna go out on a limb and think that it might be a Soaz pick here for that top lane. He is a player that has brought a lot of champions out very, you know, fresh off the bat. Uh, you know, the likes of Jace, he was, for example, the first one to bring into Europe. Uh, so we'll see where that karma slots in, whether it ended up being with Peke in the mid lane or going up to that top lane. I'm glad you said Soaz. that. Because I was, in my mind, I was like, jungle karma, but there's a new new fiddlesticks. But I'm glad you said top lane karma. I was not thinking that at all. You got, you saved me there, Joe. No problem. Uh, no one has noticed, by the way, if you didn't say yeah. anything. But there you go. Uh, on the other side, Lemon Dogs finishing off their lineup with the Twitch and an Ari coming out. And we know New Dogs played a lot of Ari. Tab's coming in with Twitch, a champion that he has put, uh, played on before. But if you look over for the other side, Fnatic here going a little bit differently. They picked Vayne in there as well. So final pick was Vayne. So we're going to see Peke on Vayne. So as on Karma, but that may change. I've got a feeling that that could end up changing around. I think we're going to see push you on Vayne with Fiddlesticks and then Peke on Caitlyn against Ari in that middle lane. And we talked about Nuduk. He has to pick his champion that he's strong with. Ari was the one we thought he was going to go, but he has to be able to do well in lane. Or Lemon Dogs, it's going to be very hard for him to pick up this win. And right now, with that Fiddlesticks, just the threat of him, it forces Tabs to pick up Cleanse. Means he's not going to have another defensive or a, a barrier to kind of bait anyone in. And that's very dangerous considering he doesn't have that escape. Well, we'll let you know if there's any uh, last-second switch-outs here. And 
does look like that will be the case. XPK is going to be playing the Caitlyn push. You're going to have the vein. All right, this is going to be really interesting to see how that works. Peke already proved it. How good he is on Caitlyn against Osla, as we mentioned a little bit earlier, against Ari. It's going to be very hard for her to close the gap. Obviously, you have to wait till level six, but the harass is going to be dangerous. And Peke, I'm pretty sure he's going to be able to do that. So, Nuke Duck, what is he going to do to kind of counter this? As you see, Lemonox, they, I don't think they were really expecting that. No, I don't think they were either. Obviously, that Karma coming into top lane. Peke playing the Caitlyn in the middle. Obviously, they're going to have that. Blood boil coming out as well from Nunu, which you know, it's nice when you've got it for one AD carry. When you've got two, it's only a bigger bonus. The downside of this composition, though, of double ADs is the fact that all your farm generally gets uh, ch uh, channeled into one AD carry. But when you have two, it kind of splits that down the line. So it means your AD carries are going to be you know, kind of strong middle, but towards the late, they're not going to be as strong as the enemy AD carries. So if Fnatic is going to make this work, they have to do well early on. So interested to see as well the karma there for so that's the first time that we're going to see it here in the european lcs outside of the jungle uh we did see of course diamond playing it twice for gambit but this will be the first time that we're going to see him in lane or see her i should really say uh in lane with so so here we go then lemon dogs versus fanatic our fourth game here of day one of super week we've got another four games coming up after this one so cancel all your plans because we're going to keep you here to watch I all can't, the games because my plans are to cast oh. I see what you did there. <laughs> but there's the head-to-head -head for you as well, by the way. Two to one in favor of the Lemon Dogs. And, you know, Fnatic, this is important for them as well because it would mean that if they end up winning this game, they end up then tied with the Lemon Dogs at any point. That, that would actually force uh, an extra match at the end exactly. of the weekend. Yeah, and with those two slots that both teams really won, it's really critical and really crucial for um, them to pick up this win. And I don't think we're going to see any level one action as we do see Lemon Dogs invading. But I was looking at the teams in terms of compositions and Fnatic, they want to pick someone off. Like, if you get someone slowed by, by Nunu, then you land that chain out of Karma, they're not going to move. They're stuck there. You have the fear, you have the sounds to use right after that. So they're looking to kill one person right away. But for Lemon Dogs, they have that wombo combo team. They want to trap everyone in Cataclysm, trap, uh, trap them with Zack, then have the Spray and Prey coming over at the top of that. So Fnatic, they can't really afford to team fight as actually Peke's going top lane and they're sitting so as middle. So we are seeing a little bit of a switch. So I was right about the whole mid lane karma, possibly. I uh, will see how that one changes. <laughs> you just saw Yellow Star there just going through the jungle. And it's, it's, look at the warding. It's a mirror on both sides of the map there, uh, except the one extra ward that Fnatic have on the bottom side of the river. But both teams have got two wards in the enemy jungle and also uh, keep a, trying to keep an eye on their own side of things there on the entries as well. So it's going to be interesting here to see where everyone's going. Soaz is actually headed towards top now by the looks of it, with Caitlyn coming mid. Hmm, okay. I mean, just like we saw Gambit versus uh, Meech Makers earlier, like they want to ward up as much as possible to see where Sanade's going to be going. And they want to make sure that actually Soaz... <laughs> We're maybe going to go head to head here, but we are going to have that Caitlyn Ari lane. We're going to have Sana not get interrupted at all at this blue buff, which is key. And you look at Dexter, he's actually started over at his red. So it looks like both junglers might interact with that top lane at that level three point. Did he not clear his last minion? No. That's not good. I'm not sure why he did that. Maybe a little bit on autopilot at this point. Or is he going to actually head up towards the enemy side? No, he's. He's just going for his blue buff, so interesting stuff there. I don't think that was intentional as Mithia gets a big blast down the bottom. And that silence is a lengthy thing along with a fear as well, which seems to last forever on you from Fiddlesticks. Yeah, what makes Fiddle so strong early on is the fact that obviously you can push the lane a little bit with his crows, the silence and the fear, but also if he can get control of the bushes on you, it's really hard for your AD carrier to, to kind of farm up. So Mithy kind of knew that, and he responded by putting a pink ward down, and they're keeping that lane pushed up so they don't lose that ward. They need to keep that. But looking for them, Yellowstar doesn't have a paint to kind of counter it. So their bot lane's not going to be able to get any kills relatively soon. So Dex has just come back down to his red camp and finished it off. So I think the point of that was he's just delayed it there so that he doesn't get counter jungled the next time it spawns. Mm. That's that the only smart. logical thing that I could think of from that. That would be very smart and sounded right now. He has a ward, but with this Nunu, with a Caitlyn, you have that ability to quick push lanes right now. So we're, we're going to have to see Dexter kind of come up here in the middle to kind of defend it, or Fnatic's going to get some good damage onto that turret. So Dexter is going to be here to cover off somewhat, just doing his raids at this point of things. Okay, focusing more on towards the CS. There is Yellow Sai going very low. There is a finisher. Expunge comes out from Tabs. And the first blood down in this bottom lane. Lemonox showing that they are not scared of that fiddle. Yeah, it's a fantastic start for Lemonox too because 
Candlesticks kind of thrives on that early on presence, like the aggression that he can put out and by being able to kill him, getting that first kill on the tabs, be able to control that lane a lot more. And more importantly, keep Bane under farm, which currently down 10 CS. 10 CS and probably just the start of it there from that one. Tabs starts to push through still. Cyanide hanging in this middle lane, keeping that blood boil on constantly, but you know, also taking the experience from that lane as well. Yeah, it's going to hold XPK back a little bit, but they're still just going for the damage on this turret. It hasn't been taken that low because remember, in 3.10, the turrets have a lot more armor early on, then they kind of fade away as the game goes on. But they've been able to hold it, and with Dexter showing up, he's level 4. He's equal in terms of levels, and he's actually ahead in farm too, 15 to 6 right now. Yeah, and on that front now. Gonna be doing a similar thing over this side as he smites the, <laughs> the siege minion and then Nuke Duck missed the last hit on it as well. So not the most incredible uh, display there, but whatever. They are still managing to hold on to this one. Nuke Duck actually is gonna go back to buy from this. This top lane, not really seen much from it. Uh, of course, it's Soaz playing the calm. A lot of damage coming <laughs> down here on towards Zoro Zero. He's gonna have to slingshot himself away. Those creeps got him stuck in there <laughs> from that, but yeah, Soaz, you're doing it. Pretty good uh, job so far. He's behind in CS, and I honestly, I'm not too sure on how well Karma does in that top end. I know late game, she has a lot of poke, a lot of damage, and when you mix that in with a, um, a Caitlyn, you can really poke a team down before you want to go for an engage. But right now, with Sonic still in, still there, still in that lane, I want to know if it's just because they want to push the turret down, or they want to force Dexter to stay middle. And because of that, he's not able to gank and really apply pressure into these other lanes. But right now, Sonic, he's heading down bottom. He wants to make a play happen, but he's going to run through a ward. Yeah, run straight over the top of a ward from this one. And Fnatic, not really going to be able to uh, follow up and chase through from that one. Mythian Tabs just backing straight off as they see Nunu coming down in towards this bottom lane. And, well, as you said, Cyanide, he's got 7 CS right now. All his experience pretty much coming out of the lanes that he's been in. Yeah, and look what he can do. I mean, he can run middle and he can run bottom over and over. Just blood boil the AD carry, push the lane a little bit, try to get some damage onto the turret, then return to another lane. And I guess that's what he's going to be going for here as well as picking up his own buffs when they do respawn. There's Peke, if you look, obviously, as you'd expect at this stage, your head in the CS with that new new presence. There's not really a lot that Nuke Duck can uh, do to stop that one from happening in there. And you can also see the Philo stone being picked up there by Cyanide in the jungle. Yeah, that's really unusual to see out of junglers, but it also kind of shows that he's not planning to be in the he's, jungle. Yeah. He doesn't want to be there. He's going to depend on this GP10 to keep taking in for him to get his gold income because he wants to keep applying this pressure, but right now, Fnatic is, it's working. I mean, right now it's working because they have a lead in the top lane, they have a lead in the middle lane. They haven't been able to get too much damage onto the turrets, but Tabs has that kill. Oh, there is Peke going very, very low. Cataclysm comes wow. down and Peke not able to escape that one. And there is the job and they worked so hard to keep him pretty much in that mid lane to stop that from happening. As soon as Cyanide left the middle lane, Ironically enough, that's when they see them come around and are able to pick up the first kill. And because he's been, him. yeah, on the game. <laughs> um, yeah, but I mean, because he's been able to sit in his own jungle as well as sit in that middle lane to get free farm, he hit six way before Sonic. So he was able to apply that calculus and blew the flash out of Xpeke. Even blew uh, the 90 caliber net, which obviously comes up, but. He was able to lock him in that Cataclysm long enough and then to pick up that kill. And that kill went over to Dexter. Not exactly who you want it to go to, but you're going to pick up that kill either way you can. Yeah, I'm not sure that they'll be uh, too unhappy with that one. It just means that Dex is going to be even further ahead of Cyanide when it comes uh, down to it. Top lane, Soas has got himself right back into the lead in terms of the farm. Double Doran's ring for him, 57 CS to 43. And, well, Negatron Cloak from Zoro Zero with that Doran shield. Wants that protection. And I'm really worried for Fnatic right now because the strategy they've been using isn't working off that w or working out that well for them. If they can't get a bigger lead in one of these lanes and start maybe picking up some kills, or if Xpeke dies again in that middle lane, they're going to be so far behind. And when you're against a team like Lemon Dogs who wants to force these team fights with their wombo combo, you're not really going to be able to do too well in that fight. I see Zoro Zero just really bringing that minion wave right underneath his turret. He wants to stay safe from that one. As Snoop Duck going to be getting his blue buff here. Uh, back into lane for him. He's 43 to 62 CS behind. So overall, Fnatic here doing really well on the farm. So push you is a little bit behind from that one, but you can expect it after that kill on his support early on. There's the ace in the hole, just a bit of harassment onto Nuke Duck. I was actually expecting um, him to be uh, behind a lot more than this, as they do go for Xpeke right here. Yeah, going straight into him once again. Look how low he's gone just from that. Can they get a final touch onto him? No, not quite, but the charm landing on towards Cyanide. Have they got the damage for him? No, he will walk away as well. And, well, both of them lucky to be still alive after that. And they
they completely turn around that aggression of Sinai, keeping his presence in that middle lane, able to push them both out and push you getting caught. Yeah, Hook coming in, Flay gonna knock him back from this one. It's a nice condemn, but the box is gonna be hit here by Pushu. Oh. There's the lantern to bring him back in. We do see the exhaust going down, but it's not enough as Tabs flashes in for that one. He had Spray and Prey running as well. And that will be another kill coming down for Lemon Dog. Second one for the AD carry. Pink Ward's down at Dragon. They're gonna start it. Just amazing. Uh, use out of the mechanics of these champions by Lemon Dogs right there. Taz got condemned into that wall, but it didn't matter. With that Lantern, with Mithy constantly pushing into Pushu, keeping next to him, he's able to pull Tabs in, able to pick up a kill and a drag on top of this. They just got a nice 2.3k gold lead in the matter of 30 seconds. Very, very strong stuff here. And, well, what would you expect other than uh, other than strong stuff from the league leaders uh, at this point of things? I mean, we always act uh, certainly a bit surprised when we see such amazing plays coming out of the Lemon Dogs, but I don't think we really should be that surprised because, as I said, they're top of the league as we see another ace in the hole coming through. Great use of the minions there from XPK to get as much damage down as he could. Kind of force Nuke Duck to play a little bit more defensive as Soas now starting to push on towards his top turret. And that's one thing about League of Legends that makes it so much fun to watch and cast and play is that amazing things like that can happen over and over and over again. You still get that same amount of excitement from it. But right now with this game, with this actually huge game where Fnatic needs to pull it off to kind of tie up the series where they potentially could be in a tie and then go into that fifth map at the end of the Super Week. And right now they're holding that CS lead middle, they're holding the CS lead top, but bottom lane is starting to get out of hand. Two kills on the tabs, he has a nice 26 CS lead. Yeah, push you. Though is, uh, yeah, as you said, not doing so well. That's the problem for them, I think, yeah. And you know, we know the vein, if you can kind of stay level in there, then you're doing a decent job because you're right. going to be getting stronger. But now he has fallen behind us. We are going to see the flash, uh, flash coming in. There's Cataclysm, the net away, but it's not going to matter. Nuke Duck able to pick that one up. And there's the problem, you know, that squishy AD carry in the middle, 50, uh, 90 caliber net really to escape is all that he's got when that flash is going to be down. And, Lemon Dog's exploiting it to the max. And the thing is, they exploited it further. They put a pink ward down in that bush to take away any vision that XPK would have. And from that, able to gank and Lemon Dogs, they are just just doing so well. I mean, you can see where Dexter has been applying pressure just in the, based on the death of Fnatic. He hasn't really been in the top end to punish Soaz, but they realize, you know, Soaz won't be able to carry the game himself. He has a lot of farm, doesn't have any kills though. And right now, since they have a stronger team fight team, it doesn't matter what's going to happen with Soaz on that top end, as long as he doesn't start to get really strong. Yeah, Karma has a way of coming back around to haunt you. So we'll see about that one. <laughs> that was incredibly cheesy. Push uh, <laughs> you here, folk uh, farming up underneath this turret. They'll be happy with that one. Don't want to get involved in the lane. Don't want to be risking anything. But look at the wards down there as well. There are currently four pink wards on the map from Lemon Dogs. Two by the dragon, one up by that mid lane, one down at the bottom. And that's just showing that the control that they've got. You know, the dragon obviously were where they were two down, but the one that you mentioned here for XPK to get rid of the vision, mm -hmm. the one down to control the brushes in that bottom lane to stop the fiddle six being so annoying and having the possibility to jump out of uh, nothing and the ulti on your face. So, you now just really, really great, solid stuff from Lemon Dogs. And not to mention, they have three more pink wards in their inventory one on a Dexter, one on a Tabs, who's the AD carry, and one on the Mythy. So they really want to control the jungle, and this is a really good way to do it. A really good and investment to do considering there's no point in buying an oracle right now but we're only 12 minutes in and we have such a strong start out of lemon dogs and yellow star i think he's dead uh, he's gonna get charmed up from this one <laughs> tab table to finish that one off not really much to talk about the vision war again they have complete control missed out on the hook there uh but that really didn't matter an easy free charm coming in from the side and that will be another kill for Tabs, who's now 3-0-0. As I said, the last time these two teams met, Tabs was 11-1-11 by the end of it on Caitlyn. And just showing that, you know, he came into this AD carry role with a bit of a question mark, in my opinion, yeah. uh, above his head. But he has, he has come and really performed so, so well for Lemon Dogs this season. I think that shows how good of a player he is. Yeah. I mean, considering he was an ex-AP mid player. But to transition from that in a matter of such a little time and to do that well is just just you just know he's phenomenal and right now Fnatic they're losing control of their jungle look how many pink wards are down yet again Joe in just the bottom side of the map for Fnatic or for Lemon Dogs I'll say and this means they're gonna lose a lot of their buffs and expect he has a decent amount of farm but just like we we're saying before double AD carry you cannot afford to funnel uh, AD, or CS into one person you have to funnel into both now, obviously splits it across the board. So right now, Fnatic, they don't really have much damage. Oh, and so as here may be getting caught out. Let's bounce coming in there. Is the ulti running from Nuke Duck. And so as going to try his best here, but 
Well, with those two champions bearing down onto you, no problem. Nuke again showing how good he is at roaming around the map. And that's even with Fnatic having those wards there in the river too. You know, that's pretty much all they could do to stop that happening. But when he walks through your jungle, what are you going to do about it? Die. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's about exactly it. what happened. But I mean, like right now, like we talked about it in the pregame, Nuduk, how strong he is when he's allowed to roam around the map and make plays happen. He's now 2-0-2. Two, two. He's got a kill over to Tavs. He got a kill for himself in that top lane just now, but an assist over to Zora Zero. And if he keeps this up, like with the control of vision they have, then is, the game's just going to get too strong. Lemon Dogs are just going to get too far ahead. Well, right now, a ward put down. Not a pink ward, though, so uh, it wouldn't have been spotted there, Tabs, if you'd have uh, gone through to that one. This bottom turret is still standing, and turrets generally not being attacked too much in this game. Only that mid outer being taken down so far. We see that Zoro Zero is now pushing up on towards the outer turret in that top lane, which he's just going to have to back away from. But Dexter is waiting here. They may try and lock down Soaz again. And here we go. So they're going for the fight here, and they, I mean, they have the turret. A little bit of health missing, actually very low right now, but they have him sandwiched, like he's gonna back away. Oh, he actually might face check into Dexter. Oh, Dexter will recall. No, he actually cancels that one. He's gonna put some damage down and so I was just speeding himself up to walk away from that one. That's the thing, Dexter, you know, camped that middle lane a little bit, got a couple of kills for his mid laner. Now he's headed a bit more towards his top lane to get the same going there for Zoro Zero. And it's about spreading all the kills around the team, which Lemon Dogs have done so well up to now. And that's what's so nice about Tavs and Mithy getting such a strong star against Pushu and Yellow Star. He doesn't have to worry about that bottom lane too much. And because of that, he can make sure Nuke Duck doesn't fall behind in that middle lane. And then now, finally shows some presence in the top lane where we weren't able to pick up a kill, but they might be able to pick up a dragon off of this. Yep, dragon spawning in. And this is going to be a Lemon Dogs dragon number two. No chance for Fnatic to come and uh, do any anything about this one smited away there in the end by Dex. So let's have a look at the gold because it's a bit of a whopping difference at this point. Yeah, I mean, 6,000 difference between the two teams and they're just pretty much turning those into items right now for Lemon Dogs where they have a tank out of built, Spirit Visage right now on Azor Zero. They have the Spirit of the Ancient Gold on a Dexter. They have a DFG and the Blade of the Rune King done. Like, they're getting items ahead of uh, Fnatic right now. And it just kind of shows that they can start to force some fights. They can force some objectives, which they're currently doing. They're going for this bottom turret. And again, look at the, the wards that they've got down here. Not just, I mean, three pink wards on the top side of the map. There's one in the mid lane there. They've got the bottom side of the jungle. And now because of that lead that they've got going on, they've, they've got more disposable income than your average millionaire right now. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm thinking to myself, uh, you know, as we saw earlier, Gambit versus Mitri Bakers. Gambit didn't have this much of this big of a lead. But they were no. just storming over Mitri Makers. And right now, Lemnox with this lead, they're, they're playing it so smart. They're not trying to do anything stupid. They're not trying to be over aggressive when they feel like they shouldn't be because they, they realize what's on the line here. They want this win. And if they keep playing like this, they're going to get it. Yeah, they are certainly on the right path for uh, towards victory. As we see Mithy there just waiting inside of that brush. Finally, an Oracle coming out here for Yellowstar. And that should allow Fnatic to get a little bit more control of the game and more importantly, of that map back. We'll see about that because Lemon Dogs are not finished here. They're still pushing on this bottom turret. And they're not being punished for it because they have the control of the vision, because they have Dexter on the sideline. They want to get it very low here. And to be honest, they actually might be able to take it soon. I think in the next wave or two, they'll be able to get it. Yeah, down to half HP already. Tabs continues to hammer away. And as soon as Vayne comes anywhere near him, he's like, nope, I'm off. And Dark Passage, I am straight out of, uh, out of the way of this one. And well, now they're joined by even more, and they are going to be taking this turret down with this wave. It's a good job by them. And in the meantime, they're leaving Zoro Zero alone in the top lane versus Soaz, where he actually got the lead over him right now when he was currently be or is previously behind quite a bit, but he's actually doing some good damage onto him. Yeah, he's going to go straight on into him there. He's let's bounce using the ignite as well, and you now may have not thought, okay, I can get the kill from this one, but forcing Soaz away to get even more of an advantage there will just help him out from that. And you see how low he's managed to get wow. Soaz there with just defensive items. It doesn't look like he's done just yet, but he's able to dodge that. <laughs> and right now, uh, we have Tabs back with 2,800 gold. Picked up a Zill, picked up a QSS. Very smart move. Doesn't want to get caught with anything. He needs to get out of a fear and a silence because he has the majority of the kills on himself. And that just shows, like, he doesn't, he, he realizes he doesn't really need more damage right now. He needs to make sure he stays safe. Yep, safety at 3 zero, zero right now. As we see, he push around once again for the blue buff. That's going to be continued to be controlled by the Lemon Dogs. We've really had a big stronghold on this one and uh, of the entire jungle, to be honest with you. The warding up till now has been absolutely brilliant. And if they keep this up, like, doing a good job of it, but it seems like their momentum has slightly 
slow it a bit, if you know what yeah. I mean. Like, they've been able to take turrets and force these, but right now they're kind of like, all right, we have the mid second or tier two turret up, we have the top tier two turret up, but they're not necessarily going for it, they're not necessarily pushing for it just yet. And I, I kind of hope they don't go for Baron. I mean, they have all the Barons against Fnatic, five to zero in their series. But there's no point going for it right now, as we saw with the game with Gambit earlier. I mean, they had such a huge lead, no point in going for something where it could potentially be stolen. But where are Lemonux looking for their next move? Are they waiting for Fnatic to come in the jungle and pick up a kill? Well, right now, it looks like that is going to be the plan as he put two men on towards his top turret. Zara Zero takes a bit of a blast there from the inner flame. They continue to put the pressure down. Tabs is waiting off just to the side, as is Mythian. They may be able to catch one out here. There's a hook coming through on towards Yellow Star. He's going to be focused, forces to flash away. And that will leave him very low. Push you now coming across to try and cover from this one. The spray and pray on there for Tabs. As Mithy getting caught here, going to get slowed. He now has us to flash away. Ace in the hole comes flying through, and so has managing to snipe off the kill. Wow, I mean, everyone tried to block that for him, but, and then he goes down, and that was with Yellowstar getting caught, who ended up flashing away, and they're actually going to continue pushing, and with Xpeke pushing middle right now, because you have Nuketok doing the same, they might be able to make it. This is a little bit risky here for Lemon Dogs, and they need to watch out, the thing is, if Nuketok goes in on towards Peke now with that DFG, Peke's not going to survive it, there's, there's pretty much no way that he can hold on to him there, as we are going to see the charm come down, not quite connected, but you can bet your bottom dollar if that charm would have landed, Nuke Duke would have gone in for that one. See, just at range there, really putting down some good damage. Another missed charm. It's all fine. Three men here for Fnatic. That's all fine for the Lemon Dogs because they're still pushing up towards top as well. Yeah, and so it's left here up all alone. That turret already is very low, but I don't know, they're still being very hesitant to go in as they do engage on the Sohaz. <laughs> right, they speak about that. But here comes Yellow Star from the bottom. And because they got that flash out of him a little bit earlier, because he's level seven. 20 minutes in, because they've been able to harass him quite well, been able to kill him a couple of times. The threat of his ultimate isn't too high. He doesn't even have boots yet, Joe. No, and that's definitely not a good sign for him. I mean, if you look at Mithy, only at level 8, so he's not a massive way forward, but if you think of the other uh, champions on the field here, they can destroy that fiddle six in absolutely no time. Finally, they get the out to, uh, inner turret in this top lane as well. And the thing what's so important about fiddle sticks in terms of levels, you can't get max rank fear until you're level 9. So he's obviously doesn't have max rank of it just yet, which you really kind of need for these fights. You have to be able to lock someone down, which currently it looks like New Duck might be his target. But right now, I don't even think Fnatic can afford to engage. They have to kind of turtle up and hope that Lemon Dogs go for an engage that they're not going to win. Yeah, New Duck now got that haunting guys in there with the uh, DFG as well. As you mentioned earlier, quick silver slash for Tabs. He's not been back to buy since then, so. Guessing he's sat on a decent amount of gold, 16 and a half hundred gold right now. He's uh, sat on as another dragon gonna spawn in. Lemon Dogs obviously got the timing on it and they are headed straight down there. And they have all the vision on top of that. So it will be a, a completed fan dance for Tabs. And every game so far we've seen today have been kind of determined on who controls the dragon the best. And we think back to the SK game earlier on today versus Alternate. They had five or six dragons. Uh, EG had a couple, of, or I think three against their opponent right there against NIP, and in the Gamma game, they, they didn't really need him, but they still had like two or three to the zero of the other team. Uh, MYM actually had the first one. Oh, they Dragon did have the first one, one yes, you're right. Well, so. That just shows you that they apparently didn't even need it uh, as they walked through them. <laughs> Lemon Dogs here setting up a bit of a trap. If they can get a hook, then they'll follow through with the entire team. Newt Duck's so, so very dangerous at this point in the game. They take down pretty much anyone. I don't think. I think Cyanide obviously going to be the hardest one of the lot to be taken down. But I don't think Nuke Duck will uh, have too much of a challenge with him either. And we see right now that Dexter's trying to make a move on that top side. But that, oh no, the charm! There's the charm coming in. Less bounce going to come down. Peke going to use everything he can to try and get away from this one. There's a cataclysm. Vayne, what are you going to do? Already used the tumble inside of it, so couldn't escape out. Ace in the hole comes through. Zoro Zero will block that one. And well, they take a kill. Plus, they've got the tower. Lemon Dogs will be happy with that. That's all they need. Just you see that one oh. charm land or that one hook land. I don't think they have the damage to kill him. He's just he's too tanky right now at this point. But we'll get safe and back away. But if the Lemonogs keep doing that, if they keep picking up one person a fag each time, push a turret down, we're going to take home this victory, and we expect it. Barely going to escape that one. Well, yeah. Mithy missed the hook, let's be fair. <laughs> I'm not yeah. calling it an escape when okay. it was, quite frankly, that. you didn't even move. Uh, you know. <laughs>
I think Mithy was trying to predict any kind of movement, which obviously didn't quite happen there. Uh, interesting stuff. The last Whisper actually was finished okay. first here for Tab, so he was going in for that one. A little bit surprised by that, though, since Emitine doesn't really have too much armor built up or prioritized against him. But, I mean, just look at the CS lead he has. Four kills. He's 199 to 130 CS against his counter opponent or his opponent. Like that is just a huge lead for him. So I guess he can afford to go for something like that. And with that spray and pray, it's just gonna tear apart Fnatic. That's 2,000 gold for Nuke Duck to spend as well when he finally goes home. Wants his blue buff first of all though. Oh, is he? Is that gonna go over to Zach? We'll see as Peke here getting caught out. Tab's gonna go in there. And Dexter secures the kill. I don't think he really needed to do that one. Tab's actually flashing in to make sure that he got that kill. I'm not sure that, that was 100% needed either, but Peke caught out of position there. Not a lot you can do. Yeah, and I mean, we're about 24 minutes in and we have a 12,000 gold lead for Lemon Dogs. And we talked about how they have like a longer average game time than they normally would against any other team, but right now, it looks like Lemon Dogs might be able to pull this one through in half the time. Yeah, we're 25 minutes into this one. They've got a humongous lead. And I, I can't see them letting this one slip. Right now, Zoro Zero just teeing himself up. Is he going to dive in there? No, he's not. Bit of a uh, letdown when he gets that max length. And he's like, <laughs> oh, no. Okay, he's not going to jump in there. But right now, prioritizing these turrets as a charm lands on so has No follow-up, though. And we've seen many times where teams right here trying to push down this inhibitor turret where they've just almost lost the game because they go, they get a little cocky, they go for an engage they shouldn't. I mean, Tabs is at half-life. He had Nuke took down a quarter of his life, and they're playing it safer. I mean, I think Baron might be more of a possibility since we're 25 minutes in, and they have that vision control. Look at the top side of the map for Fnatic. They have one more down, and that is right outside of their base. They have no vision over Baron except that ward, which I just noticed. And with that Orc on Mithy, they might be able to take that down, or they should be able to, and that could be the next move. Look at the, the item differences here as well. I mean, so the AD carries are the easiest to compare at this stage, and I think most of the problem is that you can't really compare. Both of them got that Blade of the Ruin King, but Tabs has got a QSS Zeal and that last Whisper in there, and just a Crit Cloak over with uh, with Push, who's vain. Not even got the Tier 2 boots yet. Yeah, and I mean, it's, it's a vein though, so well, yeah. if, I'm, I'm not saying right now, but like if this game lasts another 10, 15 minutes, it doesn't matter how far behind he is at this point. It just comes down to whether he can stay alive in these fights. And if Lama Dogs, I mean, they don't need to end it soon because they have such a good team fight composition, but they can't afford to let Fnatic get any sort of foothold in this game. And with this Baron, they should be able to. Well, starts it off here. And Fnatic have got no vision anywhere near right now. That Baron is going down pretty quickly from this one. Already way below half HP. Fnatic have just been pushing out the waves. And Lemon Dogs are going to be taking this Baron. And there's not a thing that Fnatic can do about it. And that takes it to 6 0 in this series for Lemon Dogs taking every single Baron possible. Even with their own, or at least the first one. But here we go. They have that Baron buff. They don't have as much vision anymore since uh, Yelstar was able to put some uh, words down. But with this Baron, with their team fight composition, they should be able to dive on a turret if they want to. Yeah, Lemon Dog's just claiming back that Fnatic jungle. They've had two jungles now for quite a long time of uh, Lemon Dogs to be farming from. And that vision going back in there once again, pushed out this top wave. Just a, a matter of time here before Lemon Dogs can break through. And you have to wonder whether it's going to be something like that, the hook landing or, you know, the, um, you know, the charm coming out of Nuke Duck to get things started. And there it is, goes over the wall. Yellow Star almost burst down from 100 to 0. DFG was used, didn't quite have that final tick. If he'd used his Ignite, he probably would have killed him. But now his ultimate's down. And Yellow Star only committed his flash. So that's not necessarily a good sign. In the end, I think that was a good trade for Fnatic because their dirt, turret didn't take any damage. And Yellow Star is now back. So that might have been a little bit of a misplay. Lemon Dogs with that bear, and they don't care. They're still going to push in. Yeah, going to go straight down for this one. They got the minions in there with them. Now I'm going to see a bit of poke coming back from Fnatic. Stun going to come in towards Zoro Zero, but honestly, they're not too worried about that, I think, at this stage. You see that Abyssal sets now added into Morel and Omicron for Soas. Lemon Dogs still stand here. And they've got a very mobile team, a team that can be from. Now, quite far away from you to on top of you yeah. in a, a split second. They have to be really wary of that, Fnatic. They really do. They can't afford to get caught at all by a charm or a hook. And luckily for Fnatic, though, they do have some decent wave clear, as you can tell. I mean, that turret's only dropped about halfway after about three or four waves uh, of minions. But with, you know, Soaz on that Karma, with Caitlyn, with the uh, Piltover Peacemaker, even with the Crows out of uh, Fiddle Six, they're able to push it out and really force Lemon Dogs to make the first move. If they want to get this turret, they're going to have to dive. Yeah, Zoro Zero has 
Made a bit of a uh, step towards that one. Going to try and split them off as he pushes those minions through on towards that middle inhibitor turret. There is Tabs actually hammering away on it, and he's taken decent amounts of damage, but he can always escape with that lantern there. Gets the shield from it as well, and you now... And heals With back up. Three or four, yeah, and they're just gonna life steal it all straight back up on the next wave that comes out of Fnatic's base. Smart move by Lemonox too. I like that. I mean, Dexter and Mithy could have attacked the minions, but they're like, no, let's let Tabs heal up because he's doing some good harass to that turret. They got it for, down further in just one or two waves than they've gotten previously, and this might be the final shot for the turret. I'm not sure it's gonna stay alive much longer. Now we see once again stealth coming out. Tabs are stood right on top of the land. Somebody going on towards Yellow Star. He's burning from the ignite. There's Let's Pounce coming in. There is a kill coming down as well, and now the Cataclysm. Pusher will flash away from it, but they're all super low. Here comes Nuke Duck. They're almost on top of the fountain there, Dexter. Look how close his flag was. But that's going to get them the turret and the inhibitor, and they're going to go straight to the mid lane. And they still have that Baron, so they can take this turret as well. A phenomenal job by them to just kind of go in with that turret was low enough. And also, Nuke Duck just pushing them out right away. Yeah, they're going to take this one here as well. I can't see Fnatic repelling this attack. Tabs oh, going no. pretty low, ace in the hole. Forced to use a barrier as well. I think he would have gone down without that one. And that signals a retreat from the Lemon Dogs, taking out that second in him turret on the way. And they're going to spend what I imagine is quite a lot of gold right now. There we go. 2.3. In fact, over 2,000 for three men. The support got 1,000 gold. 1,500 for Jarvan as well. This is going to be a nice shopping trip for the Lemon Dogs. One thing, though, that Fnatic can kind of take from this is they're going to have ways pushed up constantly now. So they're going to have quote unquote free farm in these lanes. But obviously, it's going to pull someone away from the group. And that means Lemon Dogs can kind of push another lane as well. But still, I mean, they have a lot of farm on Xpeka right now. 272. Has Infinity Edge, almost has a Fairy Dancer done. He still does a lot of damage, but Pushu needs that Fairy Dancer done soon as he almost has it built up. I mean, just with the Silver Bolts, he's going to hurt quite a bit, but the Lemonogs just have too much damage for them to deal with. Yeah, we saw that Rabadon Steph Cap finished off for Nuke Dog Plus. Another Blasting Wand added in, Rando in Zome and Sunfire Cape. That armor is starting to stack up now, which obviously against this double AD comp is exactly what Lemon Dogs want. And right now, they can have themselves another free dragon. And look what they don't have, Joe, the Lemon Dogs. They don't have that locket. They realize, you know, Magic Assist Aura, or so it's not Magic Assist per person, but they realize they don't really need that item. And because of that, Mithy has been able to spend a lot more money on these uh, MOBO boots, on to get the Oracles, get a lot more pink words down, and able to take control because they skipped that item. And right now, with that dragon, they'll be pushing up bottom here, and they have the Super Beans pushing top. They can probably go for that free inhibitor middle right now. Fnatic, what can they do to defend? And I, I'm not thinking of really anything they can well, do. Got traps down there as for as much as they can. Xpeke needs to be careful here. There we see. Inhibitor shredder to pieces. They are going to get in. Peke is going to be in all kinds of trouble. He's going to net away. Well, here comes Nuked up from the side to pick up the kill. That is bad news when they lose that. And there is Cyanide. 100 to 0. Easily done there by the Lemon Dogs. As that DFG goes in onto him. And they may just be able to finish off the game. And they've actually gone in for more kills. Pushu being hammered away on there. Zoro 0 tanking up the turret here. But the rest of the Lemon Dogs are going in on towards those Nexus turrets. The first and the second are going to fall in quick succession. Fnatic back on the fountain and Lemon Dogs are going to pick up the victory here, losing only one man in the course of the game as well and finishing off another kill there right at the very end. Brilliant performance and again I feel like I've said these words a lot today. Absolute control there from the Lemon Dogs. And I think more importantly from that game, it's got to feel so rewarding. Like the time you put in over this past week and a half of training and practicing, getting ready for these games and then just to destroy Fnatic it kind of gives you a little bit of a confidence booster. And then Fnatic's camp, all the prep they've been doing, weren't even able to kind of get them through that middle game where they got one kill throughout the entire match. Yeah, I mean, I'm just going to hand over here, shake the hands of Fnatic, who going to be feeling a little bit down, I think, after that one. You know, 12 to 1 in kills. The gold, nowhere near close. 10 to 1 in turrets, it was right at the very end as well. So, you know, Lemon Dogs, they did it by the book there. They, they uh, By the end, they were for, uh, pushing through pretty much every single tower. Only the bottom in the tower was uh, left up from that. But another incredible performance from the league leaders. And the thing is, like, I don't take any, anything away from Fnatic. Like, they had a CS lead in uh, their top and middle lane for quite a while in that game. And it was the whole strategy of having Sonnet on that new to come in and try to push the lanes yeah. in. But the thing is, it didn't work out that well. Jarvan was way more impactful throughout that game because of the constant ganking middle. Sinai didn't really gank anything. I think he maybe ganked bottom once, but that was about it. Well, he, he kind of 
constantly ganked middle. He stayed there for a, <laughs> a very, very counts, long time. And Well, you saw it. The first time that he really left that lane is when they actually picked up the first kill there onto XPK. Another one followed after. Then he went up towards the top lane to you know, camp Soaz out of things a little bit. And he was very cleverly thought out there, even from the, the very beginning. I'm going to give Dexter the, the benefit of the doubt with delaying the spawn time on his red, definitely not forgetting the last... Actually, uh, I think you're right count. on that one. I think, he, I think he delayed it. That, that's what makes most sense to me well, from that one as when well. When he got his blue over to Nuke Duck, his red just spawned. So, yeah, yeah I, I definitely have to agree with that one. That's a really smart play on his part, considering he started red first, but he waited till after blue was dead to pick it up. So he kind yeah. of reset the, the, the spawns. So, yeah. Good call. Smart stuff from that one. So <laughs> congratulations to Lemon Dogs. A big, big victory from that one. We're going to head over to Demon and Quickshot, though, to break down that last game. Thank you very much, Joe. And well, what a game it was straight away. We saw from the picks and bans we were a little confused. And it seems Lemon Dogs were not so confused because they played brilliantly. But really, it was all about that opening team comp. And it, they had to win the lane phase. Yeah, the thing with the Fnatic comp is they ran a double AD comp. And with double ADs, there's always like a ticking time bomb. The later the game goes, realistically, the more difficult it becomes to win a game. Because if you've got tanky champions like a Zac and a Jarvan, they're going to stack HP, they're going to stack armor, eventually get a Thorn Mail, and it becomes so incredibly difficult to get through that. So Fnatic picked the comp that they really need to win the, the mid game. And in order to get to the mid game, they need to survive or win the laning phase. Bit of a, bit of a, bit of a snowball effect, really. It just sort of backfired on them. So Lemon Dog's now set aside. They're on their own at the top now, they're, and they're running away with it. Yeah, so this is the largest gap we've seen between any of the teams within the league right now. And you can see why. Individually, they won basically every single lane. They were 6-0 up by about 19 mm. minutes. They were able to find kills, find opportunities, find objectives, and basically Fnatic didn't really have a reply. You know, they were trying to put up a fight, but their composition wasn't tailored to team fighting. They needed to, you know, get picks. They needed to get damage down. And their unique double AD just didn't work out for them. It didn't work out for them. We didn't really have a replay for this one because there wasn't really anything no. worthy of a replay. It was a very steady, one-sided stomp. What we ended up seeing is that Lemon Dogs transition from the laning phase to the team fight phase, and they continue to find picks. So mm. in the laning phase, they were winning out basically 2v2s, 1v1s with the aid of a jungle every now and again. And in the team fights, it was 5v5 at a tower, mm. land a charm, slingshot in, get a tower. Pick a kill. Jump back in, like over and over and over. It was just rinse and repeat because Fnatic couldn't challenge. Fnatic couldn't sit at a tower siege and say, hey, we'll throw ourselves at you because their comp didn't work for it. So they had to sit back, had to play defensive, and it just allowed Nuketuck to just sit there and fire out the charms until one landed. I mean, they're going to land eventually, and well, it was fantastic play from Lemon Dogs, who now sit on the top of the table, quite clear from everyone else. Yep. Fnatic were one of the challengers, didn't even come close. We're going to go over to Shox, who is standing by with the one and only Miffy for an interview. Thanks very much, D-Man. Uh, welcome, Mithy. Congratulations. Um, tell me how you went into this match. Of course, a very important matchup against Fnatic, but do you go into this one as we want to keep our first place or as we just want to get to playoffs? What is the mindset? Uh, I think it's neither of both. It's more about getting top two and securing our um, next LCS. And uh, yeah, I was actually really nervous before this match. You are, but still turned out uh, very well. So let's talk about their picks. It was Fnatic, crazy picks, power hour again. They had a Karma in the top lane, and then a double AD comp, and of course a Nunu. So what did you identify as, as the most dangerous thing about that comp going up against them? Well, if that, snow, if that comp uh, snowballs you, then you, you will lose. I, I really don't think how we can come back from that comp. Maybe making picks, but uh, basically their comp was very weak in the, in the early game, and... Uh, yeah, like once we got a 2v2, I knew the game was over pretty much. Yeah, Nunu wasn't able to uh, snowball all that much. So what would you say was uh, the key element that got you going and from then on you just were able to take kill after kill after kill? Well, they give me Thresh, so I knew <laughs> that if I had Thresh, the game would be over and that's what happened. Um, so tell me a little bit about wh how come you guys are looking so strong? I mean, other teams have gaming houses, you guys don't. You basically live out of a hotel and still you were able to, to bring out that much that the other teams can. So what's that secret ingredient that Lemon Dogs has? Uh, we just try our best and we always give our best and it doesn't even matter if we have a gaming house. We play for more than eight hours a day. We play. We don't like, like train for eight hours a day and then like we take pauses and stuff. We actually play for more than eight hours a day. So yeah, we, we, we do give our hearts to this game since it's our job and it's also our hobby. And uh, on top of that, this week we actually had very, very good practice against SK. And uh, yeah, it, it, it shows. 
Yeah, it certainly does. So finally going into the rest of the of the next games coming up for you guys, incredibly important. Are you dreaming of that Los Angeles trip maybe that could come up or is it for future and do you think, no, just the games now, just the games? Uh, to be fair, I am actually pretty tired of, of playing, but uh, if we actually make it to Worlds, I'll be really happy to go to Los Angeles and meet all of my actual idols, because I, I really do fanboy Korea, so yeah. <laughs> all right, but first, of course, all the games here and then Gamescom, but uh, good luck in your future games. Thank you. All right, we've got tons more action to come, but before we get, go any further, take a minute to answer our Twitter question of the day. Of course, we asked you which European LCS team will be most affected by the new patch and